Hello, my 3D laser peeps. I'm sitting here next to the X-Tool S1 laser tool. And today we are gonna go ahead and make our very first burn. I'm in my garage where I have proper ventilation to not kill myself or burn the house down. And today is for those of you who have just set up your S1 and are a little afraid to go ahead and test it making your first cut or burn. We will do that together using the Xtool Creative Space app. I will be using an iPad. You may use whatever device you have. In order to follow along, you need a piece of material. It can be any cheap junk wood. You can head over to Michael's or even your dollar store and grab something like this. Your S-Tool may have even come with something. Whatever you have, take it, and work with it. We are going to burn it and we are going to cut it. Nothing overly technical or complex. We will simply learn how to mark the item, frame the graphic, set up the power and speed, and run a test burn and test cut. Let's get into it. Open your S1 and place your material on the honeycomb. Fire up Xtool Creative Space on your mobile app and connect to your S1. If you are unsure how to do this, catch my previous video on the unboxing and setup of the Xtool S1. Go ahead and touch, add project. Touch, create project. This will open a blank project. Here is a blank screen. Consider this the honeycomb base. You can use your fingers to pinch and zoom, pinch and zoom to make it small enough to see the whole thing. Let's start by teaching your engraver where your piece of wood is. Grab your laser tool head and physically move it over your material. You'll see a red laser crosshair. Don't worry, this is just a light, not the kind of laser that burns or cuts. On your screen, touch this ruler right here. The machine will probe the material, then it will reset the probe using a device on the machine and return home to your material. Let's watch it happen in full. Probe, reset, return to material. Your machine now knows the height of your material and you'll see the number right here. The next thing we need to do is mark the material. This will teach the tool the size and relative available burning space on your material. To do that, press start marking. Here, you will choose the shape. We are using a square, so we'll choose the closest shape, which is a rectangle. Touch that and press start marking. Once here, move the tool head physically to the corner of your material and press the button on the front of the machine. This one right here, it'll beep. Move the tool head to the opposite corner and press the button again. You have now framed your material. You are done. Press end marking. If you were using a round material, you would choose the circle. And we would make a triangle on the tool. Your first mark would be here. Your second mark would be diagonal here. And your third mark to complete the triangle would be roughly here. If you look at the screen, you'll see you roughly made what it shows in the example. Press end marking and press done. On your screen, you'll now see your round material. For today's example, I'm going to use this square piece. Here on the screen, you will now see your project material. These are the corners 
that we just marked. And this is roughly where the laser head is currently sitting. Watch what happens if I physically move it. In your app, you'll see it move. Currently, its position is not important. However, what is important is we now have our working space. Now that we've done our distance and our marking, let's add our project. To keep things simple, we are going to burn one letter and cut one letter. To add that letter, press this right here and type the letter. I'm going to place the letter G. You'll see the letter G on the screen, touch off the screen, touch off the screen again, press the letter again, and I'm going to type a second letter G. Touch off the screen, touch off the screen again. Here we have, on top of each other, two letter Gs. Touch this letter and drag it onto your material. Touch this letter and drag it onto your material. We basically now have a project. This representing our wood, this representing our art. Our letters are a little small. You would simply touch and drag to make it bigger or smaller. I want them both to be the same size. So I'm actually going to delete this one with the trash can, touch this and duplicate it by pressing the duplicate button, which is hiding behind these three dots. Press the three dots, press the clone. And now you'll see I have a second G. We can line it up perfectly by moving it until you see the lines indicating that we're both centered and in line with the previous G. Boom. Now we are going to engrave the first G and cut the second G. But before we do that, we are going to frame it to make sure it's positioned where we want it on the material. Press this framing button right here. Once you hear the beep, press the button on the front of the S1. Your S1 just framed where that burn will take place. Every time you press the button, it will do it again. If you're unhappy with it, you can go ahead and move your project a little bit and press the framing button again. We've now dialed in where that burn is going to be. Once you're happy, press framing completed on your app. Here's the fun part. Each individual item, in this case, two G's, can be treated as an individual project. In other words, we can choose individual settings per object. Let's touch the first G and touch processing type right here. We are gonna choose engrave. Let's touch the second G, touch processing type right here. We are going to choose cut. Our final step is to set the laser's power and speed. Touch on the first G and touch easy set panel. Here, we'll set the power and speed. This is something you will need to learn to work with in order to dial in the right settings per material. All materials will react a little differently to power and speed. Your goal is to balance power and speed. The lower the power you can get away with and successfully complete your project, the better it is for the life of your laser. Generally speaking, for engraving, you will use faster speeds, and for cutting, you will use lower speeds. Let's take our first stab at engraving and cutting. Let's start at 50%. Keep in mind, you may have a 10 watt or a 40 watt laser. Make adjustments according to the power you are working with and I will start with a speed of 125. Wow, that was impressive. If you can't stop it by dragging, simply touch here and type it in. Right here, you'll see passes. 
if you'd like it to run the same pattern twice, you can click here and change it. For example, if I press two, it will run its job over this pattern twice. I'm going to start with once. Moving on to the second G, touch the G and you will now see you have a second set of power and speed for that second G. And let's set our power and speed. I'm going to move my power up a little bit. Let's say 60% and we're going to slow things down. I'm going to go all the way down to nine. The slower it moves, the more time it has to cut. Could I increase the power and then increase the speed? Probably, but it's more wear on the laser. Of course, I could also run a second pass if need be. Let's go ahead and test our engrave and cut. Close the lid and press process. Once on this screen, press the start button. This will send the job to the laser tool. Once you hear the beep and your screen says ready, press the button on the front of your S1. This will initiate the burn. Now that the cut has begun, you'll hear the air assist kick into gear. With the project complete, go ahead and press confirm. Should you see that your cut didn't go all the way through your material, you can run the exact project again. However, in this case, you can see the G fell through, telling us the cut was successful. It is safe to pick up your material. We also have the letter G. And there you have it. We have engraved and cut the letter G. Here is that letter G. Should you find the engraving is not as deep or dark as you'd like, or the cut didn't go all the way through, simply tinker with your power and speed and try again. It's always a good idea to have scrap pieces of the same material so that you can experiment. Don't be afraid to make a board like this with several test burns. You can set each test burn to a different power or a different speed. For example, set five of them with power 50 and choose five different speeds. See which one has the best results. If you think you need more power, pick a speed and test five different powers. Doing this can help you dial in the best speed and power for this material. When you have results you like, write it down and keep it. For example, this cut was a speed of 60 and a power of 9. I wrote 60 over 9. So next time I work with this material, I can just simply pick up this piece and remember exactly how I cut it. I burned this one at 50 and 125. Now I've got a cheat sheet for engraving and cutting on this material. And just like that, we've tested our S1 and done our first engraving and cutting without breaking anything or burning the house down. Congrats to you. We are now ready to move on to more complex projects. I'm Mr. Greg. This is the Xtool S1 and you're on 3D Rundown.